plastic 3D printing and rockets. Now it may seem like these two things shouldn't go together. After all, when you 3D print plastic, the stuff isn't very strong. And if you know anything about rockets, you kind of need to deal with some pretty high stresses and a lot of heat. But you may be surprised to know that using plastic 3D printing can actually have some really positive benefits when you're building a rocket. And if used correctly, it can actually save you a lot of money while also increasing the quality of your work. So what are the secrets of how to use plastic 3D printing to your advantage? The first method to enhance your rocket building skills with a 3D printer is to build machining masks. If you're an amateur rocket builder and you're not blessed with the beautiful resources of amazing 5-axis CNC mills, then you probably run into a lot of issues with making complicated parts with simple tools. They really do want to accomplish uh, what may be the impossible, but I don't think they have the skills or tools to do so. Well, it turns out that a 3D printer can come to the rescue. One of the reasons why a CNC machine is so advantageous is because it can give you really high precision and making sure that features and holes and things like that are in exactly the place that you want them. And of course, this is really important for a rocket because even a millimeter off and you could have an explosion. To get this precision without having a fancy CNC mill, you can actually just 3D print a mask which points out the locations of where you have to drill or where you have to mill. Then it's just a matter of punching and drilling into the places you've selected to make sure that your parts are perfectly aligned. We've actually used this technique quite a lot at Astra. It's how we drilled all the holes into our CFRP structural elements, as well as things like our injector and other components like that that require a lot of drilling. The second way you can use a 3D printer while building rockets is to make tools. This could be something as simple as a depth stop, which you can put onto your hand drill to make sure it can only drill a certain amount, to something as complicated as a alignment tool, which makes sure that whenever you're putting pieces into each other, they're coming exactly aligned the way you want them. Every project is gonna have specific tools which are gonna to be useful in those applications, so make sure to be creative. After all, it is a 3D printer and it can pretty much make anything. Once you make one tool with a 3D printer, you'll find it quite addictive and you might end up making lots of tools with it. The next way you can save some time and money with your 3D printer is to build adapters. Oftentimes when you're using machines, you have to adapt the pieces that you want to work with with the actual machine. And sometimes the machine is not exactly perfectly suited to adapting to what you want to work on. A good example of this is when we were using our carbon fiber winding machine. It has a chuck which is able to support certain types of shapes that it can hold, but oftentimes we were winding things that it just didn't want to hold. <laughs> so we had to come up with some creative solutions which would allow the chuck to actually grab onto our parts so that we could then wind them as we wanted. We've also 3D printed lots of other adapters out of PLA for many other things like our spinning stand, even up to our lathe. That one may have been a little more sketchy, so maybe a more professional solution would have been required there. But hey, it did work. If you're working in rocketry, you may often find yourself yearning for the capabilities of a metal 3D printer. But alas, you don't have the hundreds of thousands of euros to afford one. This is where the next plastic 3D printing trick comes into effect. It turns out that you can actually produce a metal part that would almost seem like it's been 3D printed using the ancient technique of casting. Compared to a metal 3D printer, casting furnaces are pretty cheap. Usually it'll set you back maybe a couple hundred euros. And boom, you can have the same capabilities. All you're gonna need is a template for the part that you wanna make. And it turns out this can be made with your plastic 3D printer. With a combination of a plastic 3D printer and a casting furnace, you can pretty much make anything you can imagine out of metal. And if you don't believe me, you should check out some of Astra's older videos because we pretty much made the whole rocket that way last year. This is definitely a clever way you can save some money. It just will cost you a little bit of time. One of the problem with engineering a rocket is actually in the conceptualization phase. Oftentimes it can be difficult to get a wrap in your mind about how things are supposed to fit together and what features might be in the way. And in these cases, although 3D modeling is great and you can do a lot of planning, in the end, usually you have to see something physically in front of you before you start to realize what the real problems are. And this is again where your 3D printer is gonna come very much in handy. I would highly recommend that before you start on any rocketry project, that you actually 3D print your concept out first. So basically take all the parts that you plan to make, 3D print them all, and see how they're gonna to fit together and how you're gonna integrate them. 
because this is where you're going to start to realize a lot of the flaws in your reasoning and your thought patterns for how you're actually going to do this. We actually did this entire exercise in our preliminary design review this year, and we learned a lot of things about how we should maybe make small adjustments to how we're planning to build the vehicle because of what we discovered when we actually tried to put it all together when it was made out of plastic. It might seem like a pain to print out your entire design, but trust me, it'll save you time and money later. Now you may have noticed that I never actually discussed the situation where you'd actually use a plastic 3D printed part as a structural item of the vehicle. Naturally, plastic 3D printing is not exactly the strongest stuff, so usually it should be avoided when dealing with structural items that are experiencing loads on your vehicle. That being said, if you've done your structural analysis and you've put in the properties for what you expect out of your plastic 3D printing and it's able to handle the loads, by all means, go ahead and use it. Oftentimes you'll see PLA structures on a rocket that aren't experiencing so many loads, like potentially holding avionics components or other things like this. But you can actually use plastic or plastic-ish 3D printing on potentially some more high caliber items. There's new technology out there now that actually embeds carbon fibers into the 3D printing filament that you have. So you can kind of, in a way, 3D print carbon fiber. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this stuff isn't cheap. So if you don't have a sponsor for this filament or some big numbers in your bank account, then this probably won't be the solution for you. But good to know that it's out there. So what are you waiting for? If you are an amateur rocketry builder and you don't have a 3D printer, go and get one! Most of the 3D printers on the market today, which can perform these types of tasks, run for only a couple hundred bucks. So totally worth the investment if you ask me. Just be sure to get a printer with the size and quality that you need for your projects. And then just increase the size a little bit more because you always need a bit more than you think you do. So get out there and start printing. And remember to expand your horizons.